There are way more shipwrecks around here than you could really count. Whoa. So what do you think of Dave? Not this Dave. You say we love him? Aren't they gonna head to the lighthouse because that's supposed to be a safe place. Thought I heard Satan. Who keeps saying Satan? Whoa. I told you. I Something told was you. just thrown at us, dude. What I the f was that? I don't know. By the time I got into the living room, I couldn't breathe. Something, something just threw a rock and then that went off. There has been a lighthouse on the property since 1826. The house that we're currently in was built in 1875. Because the tower itself was getting too close to the shore with the erosion we get and needed to be moved and centered on the property away from the shoreline. So in 1875, they rebuilt the tower and put up at the Victorian house for the lighthouse keeper and his family to live in. Here we go, we're headed inside the Dunkirk Lighthouse. Here we go. All right, we're officially locked in the Dunkirk Lighthouse. Yeah, I am really excited for this one because Dunkirk Lighthouse has so much history and other paranormal teams have been here and captured paranormal evidence, so I'm excited to see what we can get. They still use this to deflect the ships from the shore, warning them of the rocks that they could wreck into if they come close to this lighthouse. But one of the many stories of the hauntings of the Great Lakes are the number of shipwrecks that took place just off of the coast here. There are way more shipwrecks around here than you could really count. Um, in fact, we have one anchor on our property from a ship called the Annabelle Wilson. And the Annabelle Wilson sunk in a storm in November of 1913 in 50 foot of water straight out in the lighthouse. There were three crew members, the captain and his wife on the ship, and the three crew members got into the lifeboat. Unfortunately, the captain and his wife went back to their room to get their money and jewels and did not make it out of the ship. I mean, there were shipwrecks where people were involved, you know, that drowned in shipwrecks and stuff. And of course, where are they going to go? If they see a light, aren't they going to head to the lighthouse? Because that's supposed to be a safe place. Maybe this light draws them in. And maybe that's why there's so many stories of hauntings inside this building. It's possible. Possible. Not to mention, you know, the innkeeper and his family staying here. Uh, some of our lighthouse keepers were here for long periods of time. Uh, a couple of them that we know about, definitely one was Peter Dempsey. He was here from 1885 to 1902. He lived here with his wife and his five children. One of the other lighthouse keepers that was here the longest, that was Mr. Francis Arnold. He was here from 1909 to 1950 for 41 years. He was the assistant lighthouse keeper from 1909 to 1928, became the lighthouse keeper in 1928 and lived in this house until 1950 with his wife, his six children. They kind of even consider this their family home. If all of the oil burned through and that light went out, it was a life and death situation. People died. It has to be lit from dusk to dawn. It also has to be lit any time during the day if it's dark and stormy. So some days he was working 24 hours a day and it could be several days in a row if a storm lasted that long. Before electricity, of course, it was oil lights and they used whale oil and then they went to kerosene when whale oil got to be too expensive. So of course, with oil lights, you have to fill the oil lamp, you have to put the wick in, you have to trim it, you have to regulate the airflow. And of course, if you don't regulate the air correctly, if there's too much air flowing into the tower, 
of course it will burn the lamp too fast and the oil will go out. So then you've got to go back up to the tower, fill it and start it all over again. If it's burning too slowly, you get all this black smoke all over the lens and the windows. And then of course you can't see the light. So now you have to go up there and wash the windows and clean them and make sure the lens is clean. Um, and the lens itself, um, when it was an oil light, went around in a circle and it that was hooked to what they called a lens clock mechanism. It's kind of like a grandfather clock had with gears and a chain and a heavy weight. And every four hours you had to run up the tower stairs, wind the, the lens clock mechanism, get that weight back up to the top so that for four more hours, the lens would keep going around in a circle. Like you said, every four hours having to tend to the, to the light, uh, there was also a farm here. It was all self-sufficient their whole lives are, are in this lighthouse, in this farm, in this house. Who knows if they're still here. We're gonna find out tonight. Part of your job was also to make sure the ships were safe. So if you saw a ship go down, part of your job was to go rescue the people that were on the boat. Back in the um, late 1800s, there was a lighthouse keeper here and he had a friend named Charlie who used to come and visit him every day and he'd, you know, sit and chat and stuff like that. And of course, Lake Erie can be quite wild. And there were children out there playing and uh, they started getting caught in one of those rip currents. So the lighthouse keeper and his friend Charlie went out to rescue them. Charlie and two of the children died. Since that time, supposedly Charlie and the children are here in the house. We do have the plasma ball set up right here. It is back for the first investigation in a little while. We're using it right now. It is on and it is charging the energy of this house. And we also have a REM pod set up behind the doors in the actual lighthouse tower, which is far enough away that the two are not going to interfere with one another. Personally, I've, I have been here for now about 13 years. Um, as the head volunteer. And, and of course, I come into the house a lot by myself. You'll hear um, doors open and close. You'll hear people walking upstairs. If you're down in the basement, you hear things moving around on the first floor. Um, sometimes you hear music. Um, I have heard like a, a woman humming. Now they have each one of the rooms up here dedicated to different branches of the military in the hallway here dedicated to uh, Vietnam. You have a lighthouse that's already thought to be haunted and they turned it into a military museum and they're bringing in not only uniforms and actual weapons of war, but other things that could hold energy from those traumatic battlefield operations that may replay itself here in this building. We know very well Steve has a paranormal museum that's dedicated to haunted objects, and he has a war relics room in his paranormal museum. This is quite literally just an entire floor full of potentially charged or haunted items or objects that could add to the paranormal activity here at the Dunkirk Lighthouse. Oh yeah. The first shots of the War of 1812 were supposedly fired off of this property. The War of 1812 was really about control of the Great Lakes. And before the War of 1812, the British had control. So they were, you know, I mean, there was a lot of action around here during the War of 1812. Think about this foundation, the original foundation. 1875, they laid this foundation to build this house, to build this lighthouse that's been here ever since. Operating and shining hasn't stopped. Nope. So it's interesting to think about that, the energy that this lighthouse could hold that we could find ourselves experiencing tonight. We had uh, a couple of weddings here several years ago and the people outside were throwing silk flowers around on the grounds. And a couple weeks after the wedding, I was finding these white and silver and purple silk flowers in different places in the house. And of course they weren't in the house when the wedding went by. It's probably the sun coming through or something, or that light is flicking on and off for some reason. I don't it know is. why. It is flicking on and off. <laughs> that and things like that, of course, happen all the time. That shouldn't be doing that. That's a 
constant video light. I don't know why that's... Okay. How many lighthouse keepers walked up these stairs every single day? Francis Arnold walking up these stairs every single day. Mr. Dempsey walking up these stairs every single day, multiple times a day and night. Every four hours. Every four hours. We're coming up. Give me one second. Mm -hmm. These 34 year old wrists don't work like they used to. Lights. <gasps> what? <laughs> Lights. Lights. Very cool. Yeah. There are, there, I mean, we're in a lighthouse, but there's also lights here on the stairs if you'd like to try and touch those and make them go off. Can you try touching it? So one morning I came in, I unlocked the door, then I usually go through the rooms and turn the lights on and make sure everything is okay. And I walked into the dining room, I walked through, across the hallway into the living room. By the time I got into the living room, I couldn't breathe. They were like pressing against me. I said, oh, this is not good. Something is not right. So I turned to go back out into the hall. And as I turned to go out in the hall, I saw this spirit go down the hall and out the front door. So I went out and you know, started doing my things. And this tour guide came in and she, she brought a couple of her friends who were, one of them was a medium. And she said, we're just going in the house on a tour. So about five minutes after they came in, the medium came out and she said, I couldn't breathe in there. She says, I think there was something evil in the house. So I think something was passing through that the ghost really didn't want here and knew it wasn't something that was supposed to be at the lighthouse. We're here at the top of Dunkirk Lighthouse and uh, you can see for miles, you can see all the way to Buffalo. And up here beside us is the beacon itself. That light that shines across this lake, letting the sailors know not to come this direction and keeping them all safe from the rocks that line the shore. This is really cool, it's surreal, and it's beautiful. It is, it really is. With the sun getting ready to set there, it's gonna get dark here on this lighthouse. But while we wait for the sun to go down, because we do still have a couple hours, do you wanna set up some cameras and do a daylight abandonment? And once it's dark, we can collect those cameras and get started with this investigation. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, so we are getting ready to leave the house for abandonment, leave this lighthouse empty for an hour while we actually go get dinner, see what happens when the house is completely empty. We have four cameras set up, one here just inside the front door, pointing all the way down the hallway towards the actual lighthouse itself. In this room over here, which would have been the lighthouse keeper's room, we have an action cam set up, which is pointing into the living space as well as the bedroom. Upstairs on the second floor, in with the war relics that they have on display here for the museum. We have a camera up there, and we have an action cam in that spiral staircase that leads up the tower to the lighthouse. And if there's any children here, Dave told us how you love to play. You're more than welcome to come out and stand in front of this music box. It'll play pretty music or touch. These other boxes, they have lights, and you can make it light up like that. And we'll know that you're here, and you're more than welcome to do all of that later when we come back. That's why we're here. We're here to play with you. There's also these cool little balls that light up. If you touch them, they'll light up, or you can push them down the stairs or roll them across the floor, whatever you want to do. We're going to be back here in about an hour. We'll leave these toys here for you to play with. We're leaving!
Whoa. Whoa. I am on this camera. Not on my audio. Hold on. Just rolling. Whoever touched that, you're not in trouble. That's what we want you to do. Something is touching this REM pod right here. This is first session of the lighthouse, and it's already... We are trying to get the equipment set up, and it's already going off. Thank you for doing that. Dave Audio, first session. Wow. Whoa, dude. Thank you. It's like every time I leave the room. Yeah. Are you trying to play a game with us? Do you want us to turn our backs? We're looking the other way. Well, that is very strange. Yeah, now it's not doing it at all. I'm gonna take that recorder up to the top of the stairs here. Okay. So that we have ears up top. Okay. That was me. Rolling, this is uh, first session of the Dunkirk Lighthouse. I'm going to be placing this recorder at the top of the stairs. All right, I'm coming back down. If there's anyone here that wants to play that game with us, any of the kids, you can set that off again. Or you can touch the little balls that are in the room behind Dave there and make them flash. We're here to have fun with you tonight, or if anyone else is here, we're here to talk to you. Francis Palmer, Peter Dempsey, any of the other lighthouse keepers, any soldiers from the War of 1812, Charlie, the man who, who tried to save the kids and lost his life. Or anyone whose energy came here with these military uniforms, flags, weapons, we'd love to talk to you tonight. Dave, the lighthouse tour guide, had told us that this area right here was very active with the spirit of children, playing with balls and speaking, grabbing, pulling on articles of clothing. Maybe even some of the lighthouse keepers are here as well because this was their quarter, so. Putting the paranormal music box on the couch. If any of uh, the kids who live here are still here, I just turned on a cool music box, and it's kind of a neat toy. If you stand in front of it, it's gonna start playing music. It'll sense that you're there. Can you stand in front of it for us? Here, look, I'll show you how it works. It's like a game. You try it. All of a sudden I'm covered in cold chills. Are you? Yes. Did I, did I step into somebody's space here? Don't mean any disrespect. We know this is your house and you have a very important job to do. Is that you? Mm -mm. That was either upstairs or it was over here. 
very important job to do. Are you upstairs? You can come down here if you'd like. You don't have to stay up there. Who is it that likes to play with this doll right here? Turn on the Vox. Yeah, there you go. We haven't done that. I don't know what that said. Not, it either said hey or hate. The light. The light. The light. Do you like the light? Did you follow the light here? To the lighthouse? Does the light guide you here? Hey. Sounded like a kid. Uh, By the way, you may not have heard, my name is Dave and this is my friend Ryan. We're going to be staying with you tonight. What's your name? That definitely sounded like a kid. Can you touch the light on the stairs again or play with the balls on the floor? What if I rolled this down the hallway? Can you roll it back? Say yes. Sound like a kid said yes. Go ahead and try and push it for us. It sounded like a kid said yes. It did. Follow us on up the stairs here, and you can watch that light go off. So you put the music box at the top of the stairs? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Something about people. Does something in one of these rooms belong to you? I can talk. I can talk. You can talk. Can you tell us who you are? How did you find your way here? Mechanic? So what do you think of Dave? Not this Dave. You say we love him? Something like that. Do you love him? <laughs> I'm getting a very weird vibe from this doorway. Are you standing in this doorway behind me? So what do you think of Dave? Not this Dave. <laughs> You say we love him? You know, we came a long way to speak to you. And we came here on his birthday. Today is Dave's birthday, and we would really love it if you could tell him happy birthday. What happened to me? What happened to me? We don't know. Are you still here in this house? Cool. An A cup. An A cup. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh my god. <laughs> That's what it sounded like, didn't it? <laughs> it did. All right, so we are going to be trying a very interesting experiment with the Estes Method Spirit Box session. We got a response when we were in the lighthouse keeper's room that said, the light. And we actually talked to Dave, the tour guide here, who said that he believes that maybe some spirits are drawn to that light, guided here to the lighthouse for safe haven. Hey, we are scanning. Awesome. Dave's up by the light in the tower, and I'm at the bottom. He's listening to the spirit box up there, and he's going to yell the responses down. So if they are coming through the lighthouse, through the tower, following the light here, hopefully they talk to him up there and give me the answers down here. We'll find out. Is there anyone up there? I thought I heard it? Satan. Is there anyone up there with Dave? Well, I don't want to talk to Satan. If you're trying to play a prank on us by saying that, trying to pretend like you're evil or something, that's not what we're here for. We're here to talk to you. Is there anyone here who followed the light to the lighthouse? Secret? I'm, I'm afraid or not afraid? If you have a secret, we'd love to know it. If you're not afraid to tell us. I thought I heard secret again. Is there a secret that you have about this place? My name's Ryan, and that is Dave up there. Who are we speaking to? We get it? Is Charlie here the man that tried to save the children and accidentally drowned along with two of the children? Charlie, are you here? I heard Satan again. Who, who keeps saying that? If you're trying to scare us, it's not going to work. I heard it again. Who keeps saying that word, that name? Who keeps saying Satan? Francis Arnold. Peter Dempsey or any of the other lighthouse caretakers, are you here? Fine. Fine. Is there someone here who's angry with us? If you're angry with us, tell us why. We don't want you to be angry. I just heard it again. What is going on? Who keeps saying the name Satan? Tell us who you really are. Do you think that we are Satan? Do you think that what we're doing is evil? Trying to communicate with you, someone who's passed on? Do you think that's evil and satanic? Are you the evil energy that Dave, the tour guide, felt leave this house when someone was trying to protect him? So I think something was passing through that the ghost really didn't want here and knew it wasn't something that was supposed to be at the lighthouse. Dave's lucky that there's a lot of 
friends that he has here who will stand up and protect him because he can't see you. I guess it is true. If they're being guided to the light up there, if it's like a haven, if it's drawing spirits in, you could draw anything in. You can draw anyone in. Even someone who didn't have the best intentions. I thought I just heard my name. Yeah, that's Dave up there. It's his birthday. Can you tell him happy birthday? Or are you talking about the Dave that works here? He's not in the building right now. We traveled a long way to speak with you. We heard many stories about this lighthouse, the lighthouse of Dunkirk. Are there spirits here? Yes or no? Well, we've had kind of a slow night, we think, so far here in the lighthouse, the Dunkirk Lighthouse. But we're going to do one last stop here in the basement and uh, see what we can come up with. Yeah. Let's head down here and see what we can get. Let's do it. Leaving the door open at the top of the stairs. I got this earlier when we were down here. Like, just like a sense of grief or something. Not necessarily sadness, but like, I don't know how to explain it. Do you pick anything like that up down here? What I pick up on down here just feels like whoever's down here doesn't want to be disturbed. Really? Yeah, I mean, think about it. The basement is usually the least visited place in the house. So if you wanted to get away from people, especially in a place that has tours, yeah, come to the basement. Hello? Is that like somebody walking up there? I did. If you're up there at the top of the stairs, you can shut the door. Or you can push one of those things over that's down there. Roll the balls or... Push that door shut at the top of the stairs for us. That'd be a fun game, wouldn't it? I'm gonna turn on the REM pod. Of course this dead light is dead. Is it really? Yeah. I can see my shadow from your dead light, like mine's not even on. Do you want me to go get you some new batteries? It's not worth it right now. Okay. Dave, I can see Dave from right here. Whoa. I told you. I Something told was you. just thrown at us, dude. What I the f was that? I don't know. It sounded like a rock or something. And now that REM pod's going off, dude. I, I told you. That was nuts. That was like a rock flew at us. I don't know where it came from. But I don't know. I want to look. And as soon as that rock flew, Something, something just threw a rock and then that went off. As soon as that went off, as soon as that rock hit, the REM pod went off. It's not Dave, I can see Dave from right here. Whoa. I told you, I something was you. just thrown at us, dude. What I the f was that? I don't know. It sounded like a rock or something. And now that REM pod's going off, dude. I, I told you. That was f Nuts. That was like a rock flew yeah. at us. I don't know where it came from. It's not Dave. I can see Dave from right here. Whoa. It's not Dave. I can see Dave from right here. Whoa. 
I know we've done that in the past. I've done that in the past. I set the REM pod up, and I can tell when it's going to go off. And it went off before, and it just did it now. I know that it seems a little far-fetched, but I swear on my life. Thank you. I can feel it. I can I can't even, we can't even find the rock that was thrown at us. No. It hit. And I, I felt the air come off of it as it went by us. And we heard it hit. And then the REM pod went off. Yeah. That was weird. Can you light that up if you threw a rock at us? If you don't like us being down here, light up this one or the one upstairs. Push it over if you'd like. Really let us know. And if you really let us know that you don't want us here, we'll pack up and leave right now. We'll grab our stuff, we'll put it in our bags, and we'll be gone. You gotta let us know. And we both said that we didn't like the feeling down here. Yeah. That it felt like someone didn't want to be disturbed down here. Yeah. Maybe that's why we haven't gotten anything most of the night because they've been hiding down here. Tell us if you want us here or if you want us to leave. Who threw a rock at us? Do you hide out down here in the basement? I think it likes that. Yeah, not a single word has come through this no. at all. I don't think it likes that. Or they don't, I don't think they like that. This room that I'm pointing to right here, is that the room you want to stay in? Or that you stay in? Back here? I feel like something really wanted us to come down here. Yeah. And what blows my mind is for so long we've said that the best activity that we get is at the beginning of the investigation. Why is it for the past two or three investigations, the best activity happened at the end of the night? Right when we have to leave. Yeah, right when we have to leave. I heard knocking in here. I did too. Right as, and the REM pod went off too. That was on that door. I think it was. I wasn't close to it though. No. I have a question for whoever's in the house communicating with us. I know we've brought it up a few times tonight, but it just so happens to be my birthday. Could you make that go off for me? Really bright for my birthday? Could you do that for me? I guess not. I guess not. I tell you what, if you can make that light up one more time, we'll go ahead and get our stuff and leave. 
we'll walk in here and give you some room. How about that? And if you can make that go off one more time. Whatever. We'll walk in here and give... Dude, I told you! <laughs> Thank you very much, that's all. That was so responsive. All right. Well, we're gonna pack up our stuff and go then, and we wanna thank you for talking to us, and thank you for speaking to us down here in the basement, and wherever else you may have talked to us. You have a beautiful home, the lighthouse is gorgeous, and we want it to stay here as long as possible. And if you enjoy being here, we hope that you get the chance to stay. If you are interested in, in doing a ghost tour here, a private ghost tour, um, all you have to do is email me at um, dunkirklighthouse at gmail.com. Um, ask me, you know, give me a date. I'll check to see if we, it is available. Um, you can then put a down payment down to reserve a date. All of the money that you pay to go on one of those tours comes directly to the lighthouse. It is a fundraiser for us, so it's a, a great way to um, help support the Lighthouse. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're new here and turn on bell notifications so that you never miss a video. We have so many haunted locations, so many new adventures coming up. We would love to bring you along for the ride. If you would like to help support the channel, all you have to do is hit that like button and share this video with your friends and family. That's all we ask for and that's all we need, but if you want to support additionally, we do have a Patreon page or you can become a member of the YouTube channel. But until next time, guys, we wanna thank you so much for watching. We wanna thank you for watching all the way to the end of this video because that helps more than you know. And we'll see you on the next adventure in this, our paranormal quest. Bye.